The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brickeen. Brought to you by Medines Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medines. Gross Savant Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Auto in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. And Gage in Baton Rouge, get better connected with Gage. Here's your host, Lieber King. Hi, I'm Lieber King, host of the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We've got a great show today. We've got Noah Shashri, who is playing college ball, uh, went to Brother Martin. We're going to talk about his college that he's at in New York. And also we have his dad that's starting out with us, who is Garrett Shashri. Uh, and I want to introduce Garrett. Appreciate you being hey, on, Garrett. Thank you. I the, appreciate got the you whole have, family on today. Yeah, right? yeah. Appreciate you allowing me to be here. It's uh, I've known you a long time, and it's an honor to be on the show. Garrett, I want a little little background on Garrett. Uh, Tulane, 1988, 1987. <laughs> Went to Tulane, played football for Tulane. We're going to talk about Tulane too. Uh, Brother Martin High School, uh, and I'm going to talk about some of the colleges that he coached at. To me, it's impressive. He's going to sit here and go, oh, I'm going to mention all these colleges, but Arizona, Tulane, Southern Miss, New Mexico Highlands, Southeastern, Western Kentucky, ULM, it was Northeast when he was there, Bucknell, DB coach, Cheney, I didn't know that until I looked it up, Bloomsburg, wide receiver, DB coach, Cal Berkeley, DN coach, linebacker coach, running back coach, Nickel State, linebackers. Am I missing any, Bob? Uh, I think you got them all. I've coached everything but offensive line. Unbelievable. And I, and I noticed that. Offensive line. Uh, special teams coordinator, assistant head coach. So you got to do to stay employed. Right? Yeah. I mean, you got three little ones and, and you're trying to, you know, you move around while they're little and and uh, making an adventure for them. And so it becomes a little tougher as you get older. Your family has to really understand and understand it's a lifestyle people don't understand they think it's a job it's a total lifestyle that your whole family yeah. has to be involved in and committed to and 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 uh, makes it tough I, I admire you uh garrett because there's a lot of coaches that they just stay for the next job but you actually turn down some jobs to watch noah play football who's going to join us who's now in college you've got a younger kid coming up jackson who's a 225 yeah. kid but i admire you for saying you know what um, grandparents, kids, yeah, moms, dads. Well, I, after the 2019 season at Western Kentucky, came home. Uh, my middle son Noah, who will be on here in a second, was starting as a junior at Brother Martin High School, and I'm watching his games on my phone on Friday night because I'm coaching somewhere the next day. And you know, in college coaching and coaching period, not necessarily college, yeah. you spend more time raising other people's kids than your own. At that same time, my dad was not in good shape, and I'm an only child. And I thought to myself, um, I need to go home and be with, with, you know, I need to be a good father yeah. and a good yeah. son. Yeah. And then uh, three months later, COVID hit, and you know, just like everybody else, things just kind of spiraled in yeah. different directions. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure. I miss it. I miss yeah. coaching. But if I know I was coaching on Saturdays, I wouldn't get a chance to see Noah play. Yeah. And if I was coaching on Fridays. I wouldn't get a chance to see Jackson play, and they're only going to play for a certain amount of time. So, Brother Martin was in the state championship game this year. We gotta mention that. <laughs> yeah. Painfully, they didn't win it, right? But well, you know, sorry, uh, and we got there. We got and, there. Uh, I, I mentioned to my son Jackson. I said, "I'm sorry, man. You didn't get a chance to play too much in the game." And you know what he said? Young. Dad, I got there. We I got a chance to play. I got That's a chance what you want to hear. Up. And me and my other son said, "You know, you're exactly right. That's exactly right." And in Grant who's at LSU, is an intern with us right now, Grant Shasher. Yeah, so so Grant uh, is my oldest boy, played high school ball in California when I was at Cal and wrestled, and good athlete in his own right, and uh, just very, very proud of him, what he's doing with his the media career and him being at LSU and the uh, Manship School of Journalism and all the things he's doing and really reaching out to do and, and trying to get better. So really proud of all my boys and, and everything that they're doing. Let's talk about Tulane. <laughs> let's let's talk, let's about talk Tulane. finally let's talk about, about Tulane. Tulane. Yeah, you know, even if you're not a Tulane fan, I think Tulane 
gathered some fans for the first time yesterday. And I know how, you know, we know how all this works with social media. Uh, when you're in the cotton, the sugar, the rose, the big the ones. fiesta, the big ones, everybody watches. <laughs> Correct. And, and you know that as a coach. Correct. And then they go to the Cotton Bowl, the, the biggest bowl game in 60, 70 years. And I think Herb Street and a few of them did pick Tulane, which I thought was, I thought that was good. <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, Tulane made this game. You got the Heisman Trophy winner, Williams, and USC. Yeah, I'm glad they made it. They win the game. They beat USC and, and scored almost 50 points doing it. USC's defense has been crazy, but still, it's USC. And Tulane, I mean, 2-10 and ten the year before, Garrett? I mean, you you played at Tulane. Yep. So, I, I it's funny. They, they have the largest turnaround, one-year turnaround in Division I history. When I was at Nichols State, we did it. It was technically Division I because, obviously, it was 1AA at the time, as you know. Yeah. And we went from 0 to 8. And that seemed like, and we went to the in, uh, one AA playoffs, yeah. lost to Montana, and, and that seemed like a, a tremendous mountain. Yeah, I can't imagine winning two games, being in the AAC, which is a very very good football conference, and then not only running the table there, winning the championship there, but then you get a chance to play in the Cotton Bowl, and you play against arguably, you know the the. Biggest football factory in college football history, whether you count Heisman Trophy winners, national championships, uh, college football Hall of Famers, NFL Hall of Famers, first round picks. And for you to win that game um, after you seemingly had been beat and it seemed over and against the Lincoln Riley Heisman Trophy and the brand, the Trojans, yeah. right? The Trojans, right. that's who you're playing. And for them to keep on fighting uh, make should make not only uh, Tulane fans proud and Louisiana football fans proud, but anyone who believes in football and the underdogs and who may be going through a tough time and wants to persevere and feel like they can fight back. Tulane is what you need to look at. They're as the a model. Team. They're a model of believing and just keep working and working yeah. and working. We're going to take a break. Willie Fritz has done a great job. He didn't take the Georgia Tech job. Thank God for the Tulane fans. He's a legend. Regardless of what happens from now on, he's a legend for life. Probably can have an, uh, be an employee for life. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be right Fritz, back. Fritz Pratt and Spears <laughs> right, right. are in lore, Tulane lore forever. Big time. We'll be right back with more Garrett Sashery. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. What does that bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen, the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We have Coach Garrett Shashery, who's not college coaching, but He's quarterback training. <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't want to mention a couple of kids because we don't want to leave anybody out. But you right. have worked with a lot of quarterbacks in the last two, three I, years. I have. I have and been fortunate to work with some very talented ones, uh, some that are, you know, going to be going uh, to the highest of highest Division One programs uh, and guys who are playing at smaller college programs. I work with guys who are – just good high school players and going to just play in high school. Uh, I work with little kids. I've worked with pros, guys who are getting ready for the draft. So it's been great. I will tell you that I enjoy working with the guys who are just going to be high school players as much as the guys who are going to sign somewhere. Right. Because uh, in that household, those four years in high school, those last three or two years that he gets a chance to play, they're as important as any years in any household of someone who's right. in college. Right. So. Um, it's, it's just good to help. Uh, it's a way for me to scratch an itch, still stay yeah. around football, yeah. still work with kids, uh, not necessarily the prima donnas of playing, you know, coaching yeah. Power Five football. And I just really enjoy it and, and uh, helping kids kind of reach their goals no matter what they are. Gary, you've coached at some interesting schools. You've coached at the academic schools. I mean, Cal Berkeley, you know, that's the Stanford 
They're, they're rivals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know the final play of the, the game when sure. they had Elway. Sure. You probably saw that when you were there yeah. all day long. But yeah. yes. you were at the Bucknells. I mean, yeah. Bloomsburg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all these small schools, big schools. Arizona with Rodriguez. Um, right. I right. mean, you. Well, I was that, actually I was actually at Arizona with Stoops. With Stoops, and yes. Then, and yes. then Rich came in uh, as we were in college football. Always, you get shown. Yeah, the door. right, right. Uh, I was right. there with Nick Foles, but. But no, all the places that I've been in, in academic schools, the Bucknells, the Tulane's, the Cows, they're a different type of athlete. They're a different, it's a different type of recruiting. Um, and then when you go to other places, you know, not that you don't have highly academic yeah. kids, yeah. But, but it's just a different recruiting. Um, no, I've been all over. I, I always tell people that just means that I'm old. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, if you, you got to move around to stay employed and look, I'm, very, very uh, proud of the career I've had. I'm gonna help your resume. You're not old. You know, you're not in your. You're not. Look, this guy's getting hired. In his, Willie Fritz is in his uh, 60s. Yeah, it gives me hope. Yeah, it gives he was me hope. late 50s when he was hired. I gotta start working. I get on the treadmill. Yeah, and get ready to good. go when I get that call. You good? Um, what do you What do you see about the portal and everything that's happened in the last three years? The game. I mean, since you've been out of, I think you you caught a break getting out in, in many ways. But, <laughs> I mean, you got the portal. You have NIL. Garrett, what do you think of the life of these guys? You lived the life for 30 plus years as a college coach. How do they handle all this? I mean, you know, it was stressful before. Right. It was stressful before NIL. It was stressful before the portal. But you you woke up at five in the morning. You went to the office till three in the morning. Yeah. You worked those hundred hour weeks. There's no more time to put on the schedule, right? Well, Yes and no. Thankfully, you know, with obviously technology, it's reduced that right. time. But there's the time goes to something else, right? I mean, if you're spending less time, let's just say, in writing down every little formation you can put in the computer, well, that, that time is you don't just get to go home. Yeah. You go, it goes into recruiting, yeah. or different things like that. No, the NIL and and um, NIL is crazy. It's created, you know, more of a divide of you know the us and them's and the big boys and the small boys because. You know, obviously you can buy a team and you can cherry pick off of teams. Hey, look, you're at name mid-major. You come yeah. here, you're going to make $50,000 a year. Now Tulane, your old school, can rebuild the same they were this year. Correct, correct. Because they've won the big game. Correct. And then, you know, Tulane's going to benefit, thankfully, from being in Louisiana and New Orleans with people that, you know, now we're not talking about NIL, let's talk about the portal kids leaving and, and realizing the grass isn't always greener, yeah. Tulane's benefiting from that. But the, but the NIL money and the portal has almost turned football in, in a way, something I don't recognize. I don't know how people can transfer four and five times in, in a career, and I get they're looking for a chance to yeah. play, and the coaches do it. I get that. But, but I always tell people, when you leave this school and you go to that school, at that position at that new school, those guys aren't right. going to just say, hey, come on in and take my position. Right. You're going to have to beat them. You have to eventually right. win a position. Right. You can't just keep moving and moving and moving. How would you be one of those guys that left Tulane in the spring pre-fall? Yeah. I, I mean, mean you, man, if they left Tulane, they're going, I well, could have been a part of this. Well, let me let me just tell you this. <laughs> if my kids came up to me when I was at Tulane or at Cal or Bucknell and said I wanted to leave, I would look at them like I'm crazy. they were crazy because – the education. This right. is why you're in school. That the value of that paper you're getting from that yeah. school. Why would you leave that? Right. And and now everyone who's there who stayed or decided to believe they're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be Ladane Tomlinson or Joe Burrow and make right. cool. 50, 60 million dollars. Correct. Correct. But if you're at Tulane now, you're getting a degree and you went to the Cotton Bowl and you won a conference championship. Yeah. That's a heck of a career. Now you went to Brother Martin. Your boys went to Brother Martin. Noah's coming on after. What do you think of the Catholic League? I mean, Jesuits been on fire. Curtis won it. You had two Catholic League teams play for it, Brother Martin and Curtis. Holy Cross, not a bad team if they're not in that district. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you've got Shaw that's coming back. And yeah. I mean, it, it, you got Edna Carr in it, which yeah. has really made yeah. it harder. Yeah. But that whole league is just incredible. Well, I know before Carr got in, I saw uh, something once uh, not too long ago that the Catholic League uh, was ranked uh, the sixth toughest or best high school league in the country. Six. I believe it. And that was before uh, Carr got in. I've lived all over the country 
and the and and some of the leagues that they said were above the Catholic League, I totally agree with. And some of the leagues that they say were above the Catholic League, you don't agree with. I'm not. I, 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 you know, I think maybe it's a little biased. It was or where good for from. that area. Yeah, yeah, it was good for that area. But uh, no, it's a tremendous league. Um, uh, you know, very proud of it. Uh, even Noah uh, up in up in New York and when he was in Connecticut, you know, he brags on the league and the amount of NFL players in the right, league. Right. And he goes to, and you know this. He goes to school with kids that went to Bergen Catholic and all yeah. these schools in New Jersey. New Jersey. And uh, one of his friends, they, you know, were talking about, and the kid's dad had been a coach at Bergen Catholic, and so he asked, "No, he goes, y'all in John Curtis's league?" And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "We went down to play them from Bergen Catholic, and they beat our butts." <laughs> <laughs> and Bergen's like in the top three in the country. Oh, without well, that's a where doubt. the Sims went. Sims, Chris Sims, all, Chris. all those guys. I mean, yeah. in Northeast, if, if for people down here, they would be the Curtis of. New Jersey, right. New York, that whole area. Right. It, they're, everybody recruits Bergen County. In, in Pennsylvania, you had Valley Forge uh, Prep School and all these other ones. Yep. Yep. Scranton and Harrisburg. But it's good It's good to know that the, the Catholic League, the name, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of pride in it. We have so many kids in the NFL right now currently yep. on rosters yep. that I, I'd like to match that up against any school, any district in the country. we got 40 seconds left. I want to say this and get your opinion real quick. Aaron Anderson from Edna Carr. Leaving Alabama will be a star at LSU as a five-tool guy. I, I hope he will. I think he will. Uh, but you never know. I, I'm yeah. going to say this. You know, people leave for a reason. They transfer for a reason. I get it. It was only one year and he's back home. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be a star. But I'm also I, I'm going to put a plug in myself for a kid that I worked with, Landon Ibietta. Oh, well, he had two uh, catches I'm, yesterday. Yes, I'm looking for him to have a big – I'm looking for both those guys. Skipper from Mandeville. Yes, looking for both those guys to take LSU's passing game and be electric on both sides uh, of the line of scrimmage, one-on-one on one and one on the other, or two on the same side, however you want to do it, and, and uh, really do some damage for LSU in the future. We're about to end the show. Garrett, any final thoughts from you? Any shout-out to anybody? Any coaches or anything? No, no. I just uh, – this is a great show, and, and I appreciate you allowing me to be on. You've been done so much great things for high school football and, and Louisiana football over the years, and, and uh, just want to thank you for being on. And, and people out there, support him. He's a genuine man, and, and uh, if your kids or you are looking to do some things past high school football or en enhance your – current high school experience, Lee is the person to speak with. Garrett, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Keep appreciate training it. those quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me put a plug in <laughs> Ashton Performance Training. Um, and speaking of the NILs and the portals, we have a lot of young men in different positions that work out there. And, you know, you get a chance to talk to them and work with them. And it's a tough deal for those players. Before we go, give out your email how they can get in touch with you for quarterback training. Oh, yeah, sure. You can, you can just reach me at uh, – uh, let me make it easy for everybody. Uh, I'm going to spell it out. G-C-H-A-C-H-E-R-E-3 at Hotmail.com. So it's G, my last name, Sachery, if you're familiar with Sachery seasoning. C-H-A-C-H-E-R-E-3. Then That's the number three. And at Hotmail.com. Give Garrett a call if you want to train and your quarterback needs to learn the details to playing quarterback, whether it's D3 or D1 or... Just get better in high school if you're not going to play college ball. Uh, I'm looking to help anybody who wants to be helped. And uh, kids, they, they give me motivation and inspiration, so I'd love to help your kid. Appreciate you, Garrett. Garrett Shastry, former Tulane. Green Wave, I think everybody knows what Tulane's about now from the Cotton Bowl. We got his son coming up next, Noah Shastry, who plays college football. He's in town for the holidays, and we're going to talk about his college and what he's doing. Now. He went to Brother Martin. We'll be right back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report podcast. 
we're at a great Italian restaurant, uh, the Giulio Brothers Italian Brothers here on Perkins Road near Ellis Shoe. Great place to eat, not far from Acadian. If you're from New Orleans or Lake Charles or Lafayette or Shreveport or Monroe, it's a great place to get a bite to eat before the Ellis Shoe games. And also they have brunch on Sunday at 10.30 in the morning till two. They have their regular menu and breakfast. I'm telling you, it's the best in Baton Rouge. I'm here three days a week. Mike will tell you that, Mike Johnson, the owner. But we got, I hope you enjoyed Garrett Shashry, uh, coach college ball for many years, training right now. His son, Noah, joins us. Noah Shashry. Noah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you're in town for the holidays yes, because sir. you're a college guy. Yes, sir. And show off the name of your college, Hobart. Yes, sir. Which is in upstate New York. Yes, sir. Tell everybody about how you got to Hobart. It wasn't Hobart first out of Brother Martin. Mm -hmm. You went to a prep school. Yes, sir. So, you know, my senior year was the, um, the COVID year. And after the season, you know, recruiting didn't go the way I wanted it to. And my dad knew from coaching the Northeast, knew a little bit about the prep schools. And we talked about it, decided to do it. That went through that whole process, uh, went up there, played good ball. And then uh, Hobart, which is in upstate New York, started to recruit me. A bunch of other Division three schools, which I've never heard of before. And I was a little bit like that. I don't know if I want to do the D Division three. My goal yeah. is always Division one. He was like, just go on to visits, see if you like the school, the schools that are looking at you. And yeah. they started, I went on the visits, like, wow. Like, Open these schools, draws. These schools take football, like, you yeah. always think Division three. Oh, I don't know. They take football seriously. And since I've been there, I've learned, like, it's really good ball. There's a lot of really good players up in the Northeast. So for any 17-year-old kids watching, 18-year-old kids that are like, they only know like five colleges, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. It opened your eyes, so let them open their eyes. Yes. I mean, there's so much football out there. To so much, like, you're going to learn is, like, there's a lot of good players that play Division three ball, like guys who possibly got under-recruited that probably could be at the FCS level. There's a lot of good academic schools, too. You can play football and go to a really good school like Hobart. Um, Union, which is another school. There's a lot of really good academic schools that allow you to play football, a good financial aid, and it's just something different. I'm in New York, I'm in a different part of the country. I've grown so much as a person, and it's something, if you're interested in really playing football at the next level, don't just slide on D3s. Like, actually, go and take a visit and see if you yeah. like it, because you might turn out that you really enjoyed your visit and, like, it's a place you would like to go. Don't listen to your friends. Open your eyes and go see it. Um, you went to Brother Martin. Yes, sir. Linebacker. Yes, sir. You've grown into a linebacker now. Yes, sir. And I hear you're like 210, 215 now? Yes, sir. Right now I'm six a little... Six foot? Six foot. Right now I'm a little under it since the season's ended. I got to put Leaned the weight up back on. But, yeah, I went... This year as a freshman, I was 210. Um, start, started off at safety. Dad said, hey, if you want to play at the next level, I think you might, a linebacker might put be the thing weight. for you. Junior year is probably a buck 80, buck 85 in the Catholic League. Which in high school. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's, right. That's, it's I tweener. Start, yeah, tweener. And then senior year, you know, I got to about 200, 205 pounds and... I really started to play well yeah. and something I fell in love with and linebacker, something I grew into. So still uh, always for me, big things, always make sure yeah. I keep the weight on, but um, something that probably one of the best decisions I ever made. Noah, talk about some of your teammates. They're from all over or do you, you meet a lot of them from New York, Pennsylvania? So mostly Northeast. I have a lot of friends from New Jersey, New York, okay. um, New Jersey, New York, Mass and Connecticut. I'd say the big, uh, the main States. Um, but in, the biggest thing I've realized is down here, Division Three is not maybe a big deal. Up there, right. okay, if you don't yeah. sign Division One, it's a big deal to sign Division Three. Right. A lot of these schools are big time powers. Um, a lot of kids, that's their goal, is playing at some of these Division Great academic colleges. schools. Great academics. Um, even and if you're, like anybody says, if you're good enough, if you, your dream is to play pro, which if you really are good enough, they'll find you. At my school, um, Ali Marpet actually went to Hobart. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay all pro, second round pick. You know, it's very rare, but if you are good enough at these schools, they will come find you. This year, um, we played Union, and they had a receiver who's an All-American, 6'3", could really run. Um, there were NFL scouts at pr his practices and at games this year because okay. they were, he was on the radar. Don't know if he'll get drafted, but he'll probably get picked up by somebody. And he's, he was a really good player. What do you think of the weather? It, huh. you, a little snow? You've seen a little snow? Yes, sir. That was something, if anybody comes from down here, you have to get used to. Uh -huh. Practice this year in the snow. First time in my life, I've ever, <laughs> forget about playing in a game, practice in the snow. I feel for the kicker. Yes. It, it was an absolute different experience. Um, it's something that, it's a different type of ball, though, with the snow and the cold. Like, it really, it's a tough mm -hmm. brand of football. It's a little bit different. It's something I still am getting used to, but something you kind of learn to enjoy brings out the top not far from Syracuse and y'all got the Syracuse Sa colors same colors as Syracuse 
Uh, we're about an hour from Syracuse, an hour from Rochester, that area. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of kids from New York City, all over New York. We've got kids from the Bergen Catholics of Jersey, Pennsylvania's. So a lot of kids, not just from the Northeast, but big time high school programs in the Northeast that go to play at these schools that maybe aren't good enough to play at the division one level. No, we got a minute left. Let's brag on your high school brother, Martin. They played the state championship yes, game this year. Little brother's You're proud team. of him, huh? Yes, sir. My little brother was in the team, sophomore. Um, he played on special teams, was on a kickoff cover this year. So you got okay. game time to see championship game, something I can't say. The brother Martin, I think four years in a row, state semifinals, trying to get to the dome, finally do it. Shout out to Brendan LeBlanc, Rylan Johnson, Clayton Leonardo, um, all those guys. I saw them grew up as sophomores and now they're seniors and we we're able to at least get to state, which is a big accomplishment. And uh, the coaches, Coach Manise and Coach Giglio are two guys I admire a lot and had a lot to do with how I grew as a football player. Lambert so, and Jackson and a yep. few other ones. There's a lot of good players. Yes, the kicker and punter is a good player. Yes, sir. Um, I tell you, man, any any final thoughts before you go? I know you got to go back to New York pretty soon. Yes, sir. I, it's a long break. I actually have to the... 22nd. We wow. Have, we're blessed with us. Yeah. I can go back to college. I don't have to work. For <laughs> Me and your dad would take that. I yes. have to go back to work for a while. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a really long break. I'm lucky for that. Um, yeah, I know. Just anybody who's interested in playing at the next level, you know, if Division One's not what you're getting, reach out, especially if they're not recruiting, reach out to some of these schools in the Northeast. It's really good football, really good academics. And like my dad says, and like all our coaches say, you know, you're worried about Division One and the glitz and glamour, but when the whistle blows and your helmet's strapped on, you, you can't tell the difference. It's football. It's just There's a game. There's 2,200 other colleges out there to go to. Yes, sir. And if you're a kid and you only know Tulane, LSU, UL, that's fine. But there's other colleges. Hobart is one that not a lot of people knew till today. And be sure to give them a – go on the Internet because of social media. You yes, can sir. look them up. Yes, sir. Um, any final thoughts? Any, any shout-out to anybody? I know um, your dad's here, your brother's here. Yeah, obviously my dad, he's probably the biggest reason I'm at this school. I'm grateful that he was able to widen my horizon and uh, – Shout out to a couple of my friends, uh, Dante Galella. He's from uh, Jersey. He played at Morris Catholic. A lot of friends at Bergen Catholic. Um, another one of my friends, Byron, he's from Jersey. Seton Hall okay. Prep, that whole league. It's just to show that, like, just because you're D3 doesn't mean there's not good players. And guys from also big time high school programs go to these schools. This well. guy's going to take you to Cape May at some point. <laughs> yes, I, I worked in Cape May for a couple of months. Uh, and then Jones Beach in New York. The other side of New York, uh, by New York City. But good to meet you, Noah. Nice to meet you. Thank Saw you, you play me. at Brother Martin, and uh, you've grown up. I mean, you look like a guy that can be a college coach like your dad one day. <laughs> you could be an administrator, one of the two, man. Yeah, I've heard that a lot, actually. And so. you've got three years left. Yes, sir. I'm a freshman, three more years. I'm excited and can't wait to play more ball. Good luck to you. What's the mascot real quick for uh, we go? Statesman, Hobart Statesman. Go Statesman at Hobart in upstate New York. Noah Shastry, Google, keep up with him. Brother Martin High School out of New Orleans, native. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see everybody again on Monday. Be sure to subscribe for free. We hope all these guys do too before the day's over, but subscribe to our show on YouTube. And that's the Sports Scouter Report. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.